Welcome to the Cary Systems Technical Institute video training series. This program will review the DOORS 32 DOORS for Windows software basic installation and configuration. For proper installation and configuration of the software, please view the modules in the order listed. This will ensure that the information needed for programming will have been created and is available. Modules 1 through 9 will guide you through the installation of the software onto the host PC and configuring the hardware and operating parameters for proper programming and operation. Modules 10 through 16 review additional features used for basic system operation, communication between the host PC and controller network, and manual control of the doors, inputs, and outputs. This presentation consists of 16 modules. This is module 9 of 16, Setup Users. In the Setup Users window, you can enroll users, enable or disable users, set user access privileges, manage user information, and remove users. Open the Users window by clicking on the Toolbar button or selecting from the Setup pull-down menu and clicking on Users. Click the Enroll button in the Spreadsheet window to start the enrollment process. When first deploying your system, the Setup User Spreadsheet will be blank. The Enrollment Wizard opens. Either Block Enrollment or Read Enrollment, also learn as, known as Learn Enrollment. The Enrollment Wizard will guide you through enrolling credentials. There are two types of enrollment, Block Enrollment and Read Enrollment. Read Enrollment is also referred to as Learn Enrollment. The screen appearance is determined by options selected and may be different than the examples shown here. Block Enrollment is for enrolling a sequential set of cards by entering a number range. All the cards must be in numeric order. You must know the facility code of the credentials for proper block enrollment. Begin the block enrollment by clicking the I want to enroll a block of carry cards button to block enroll carry cards or click the button to block and roll Wigan cards. If you have both types of credentials in your system, you must block and roll them in separate operations. The block enrollment process is almost identical for carry cards and Wigan cards. Much of the same information is required. Wigan cards must assign a primary format. This field does not appear when enrolling carry cards. Block enrollment can also be used for keypads. If you are block enrolling PIN numbers, they are treated like 26-bit Wigan card numbers. Carry Systems recommends that the PIN number facility code be set to zero. Enter the starting card number in the starting from field. Enter the ending card number in the to field. To block enroll one card, Enter the starting card number and leave the ending card number blank. Enter the facility code. Facility code is found on the box or bag your cards arrived in. The facility code cannot be determined by visually looking at your cards. If desired, enter a beginning assigned card number. This is an optional separate card number that you can define. Assigned card numbers will be assigned in sequential order to all block cards enrolled. Do not use this field unless you are really sure about it. In most cases, leave this field blank. If you are enrolling Wigan credentials, you need to select the format of the Wigan cards being enrolled. This field does not appear when you are enrolling carry cards. Click the Finish Enrollment button to complete the enrollment process. All the information necessary to perform block enrollment has now been collected. In the next window, the total enrollment count to be performed is displayed. Before continuing with the enrollment process, verify the total enrollment count. 
This is your last chance to easily correct any enrollment errors. If the count is correct, click the Do Enrollment Now button to continue. The enrollment status window appears and the number of cards enrolled is displayed. Click the Done button to close the enrollment wizard. User fields in the Setup User window now appear for all enrolled user cards. These fields define the user parameters. Click the Save button to save the database. Read enrollment is used for presenting cards to a reader. Cards can be in random numeric order. Use read enrollment if you do not know the facility code or the numbers are not visible on the credential. To begin read enrollment, click the I want to read carry cards button to read enroll cards. This screen appearance is determined by the options selected and may be different than the example shown here. The enrollment wizard will guide you through enrolling credentials. Read enrollment is also referred to as learn enrollment. Click the start enroll button to start the read enroll cards process. If you're read enrolling Wigan cards, select the channel to be used for enrollment, the A reader, the B reader, or A and B readers alternately. A and B readers refers to the connection point of the reader on the master controller. The A reader is connected to terminal block 5. The B reader is connected to terminal block 6. Select the format of the cards to be enrolled, and then click the Start Enroll button to start the Read Enroll Cards process. You can only enroll cards based on the type of controller you have. A carry controller reads carry cards. A Wigan controller reads Wigan cards. Present the cards one at a time to the reader. The reader responds to each card with a beep and a flash of the LED. The card number information is then displayed for each card presented. Once all the cards have been presented, click the Stop and Roll button to stop the read and roll process. All the information necessary to perform block enrollment has now been collected. Click the Finish Enrollment button to complete the enrollment process. The total enrollment count to be performed is displayed. Before continuing with the enrollment process, verify the total enrollment count. This is your last chance to easily correct any enrollment errors. If the count is correct, click the Do Enrollment Now button to continue. The enrollment status window appears and the number of cards enrolled is displayed. Click the Done button to close the enrollment wizard. The user fields in the Setup Users window now appear for all the enrolled user cards. These fields define the user parameters. Once users are enrolled, user data can be managed either through a spreadsheet or a dialog box. Switch to the spreadsheet display by clicking the toolbar button and use the scroll bars to navigate to a specific user or data field. Switch to the dialog box display by clicking the dialog box button on the toolbar and the previous and next buttons step from user to user. With the user data fields, you can enable or disable users, set their user access privileges, manage user information, or remove the users. In the name fields, you can enter a last name and a first name and an optional middle name, either in the spreadsheet or in the dialog box. Enter the information as appropriate. The access groups were previously created. 
for a card to grant access, it must be assigned a valid access group and be enabled or turned on. Scroll through the pull down menu and select the access group to assign to the user. The department group allows you to define and assign a sorting or reference name to each user. Either click in the field and type in the department group name, or scroll through the pull-down menu and select an existing department group to assign to the user. Once this list is populated, the department group names cannot be deleted. Enable a card by clicking the On button or the Activate User checkbox to activate a user's card. The Enroll Date and Time fields list the date and time the user card was turned on. To void a user, select the user by last name and click the Void button. Voiding a user removes a user from the database but leaves the card in the database for reassignment to a new user and to keep a history of the old user. The void date and time lists the date and time the user was voided from the system. This is displayed until the database is saved, then the information is archived. To delete a user, select the user by clicking in the last name field and click the delete button. The user must be voided before deleting. It removes a user and card from the active database. The user information does remain in archived history files. The personal memo field allows you to define up to six custom memo fields. The new personal memo fields will appear to the far right of the user spreadsheet or in the personal tab of the dialog box. The personal memo fields must be activated via the dialog box setup. Once active, a new personal tab appears. Click a field checkbox, enter the memo field title, and click the Save button. Click in the memo field and enter the specific user information. Once all database entries, edits, and changes have been made, they must be saved. Click the Save button to save the database changes. If the database is not saved and the user window is closed, all new information is lost and must be re-entered. Click the Update Net button in the toolbar to perform the network update. After users have been enrolled and user information has been entered, the database must be uploaded to the network. The network update process is described in a separate module. Reissuing a user takes that user's data and moves it to another row in the spreadsheet. This is typically done when a user has lost or damaged a card and needs to be issued a new card immediately. The, the original row is voided during this process. A reissue wizard leads you through the process. Select the name from the spreadsheet and click the reissue button to start the reissue wizard. If the row is already selected, click the Use Current Row button. If not, click the Pick From Row Now button and select the correct row. Click the Pick To Row Now button and select the, current, the correct row to move the information to. Click the Copy Row Now button to transfer the information to the new row and void the original row. The information has been moved to the new row, and the original row has been voided.
The user spreadsheet can be sorted in ascending order, lowest to highest value, using any category. Click in a column title to select that column, and then click the sort button. The block copy data operation quickly copies data from one user to multiple users. Click in the cell with the data to copy. Then click the block button. Select the rows to which to copy the information. Click on the first row and drag to the last row for consecutive rows. Note that they all turn black. Click and hold the control key then click on selected rows if the rows are not consecutive. And then select the copy button. The data is copied to the selected rows. This concludes module nine of 16, set up users.